What's up guys, SpinFireArms here. Now, today we're going to be talking about the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield in 357 SIG. Now, what's interesting is, I actually have my 357 SIG Shield sent away right now. I'm actually having work done on it. It's been sent away to two different companies. The first company took about eight weeks, and they did an amazing job on the slide. Now it's being sent away for porting. Just wait and see what my new shield in 357 SIG is going to look like. So all I did in this case was grab my other MP40 shield and throw the backup barrel that I had, and boom. Now we can talk about it again, right? This right here also has the apex trigger. But before we talk about this, I wanted to point something out. The HK P2000 subcompact. Notice what I did to it. Right here is the original 9-round mag for it, right? And it's sort of like a Glock 26. You got to tuck that pinky. Or you rest it here, and it sort of like does something weird with your hands, but it's still very shootable. Now, this isn't 40, so it's competitor to the Glock 27 and the MMP 40C and stuff like that, right? But anyways, right here, with the X grip, you now get 12 plus 1, a short slide and barrel, so you're comfortable for carry, full grip on this handgun, 12 plus 1, like I said, 13 rounds of 40 Smith & Wesson. Once again, just using an X grip, just like the Glock 26, the Glock 27. Using X grips makes it not only so you can use the larger mags without gaps, but look at the spacing for your fingers. I have fatter fingers. Check this out. So ergonomic. If you guys have ever held the VP um, subcompact, it sort of looks like it, and it feels like it. It absolutely feels like it. This setup right here is sick for wintertime. I can't wait to carry it. And like I said, you can also just carry it as a backup mag, but that is using an X grip. Absolutely love it. So still get a small, concealable, comfortable handgun. If you're carrying appendix, it's still going to be very comfortable as a man, but also you get that nice um, grip on it. Just want to point that out to you guys. Now, back to what we're talking about. I actually used to carry the M&P 357 SIG as my work carry. And being my work carry, I actually really started to like it because it's when it's in my work rotation or any part of my everyday carry rotation, it comes to me with at the range, right? Even though you're spending a little bit more money, you can still get amazing results, amazing ballistics, and crazy power out of a short barrel fire. Now, when people make the argument for 9mm, which like I said, I carry 9mm all the time, I'm literally pocket carrying a Glock 43 and 9mm right now. Just pulled it out of my pocket because I just got home from work, right? So I still like 9mm. But when people make the argument for 9mm, oftentimes when they're talking about the P365, the Hellcat, the FN Reflex, shorter barreled handguns, you're not getting the ballistics on the back of the box. You're just not, right? That's where 357 SIG also comes in. A lot of people carry 9mm, like I said, but they carry it in small, concealable packages, which there's nothing wrong with that. But when you have 357 SIG out of a shorter barrel and in a smaller package, it becomes a much better round than 9mm. Many people argue that 40 and 357 SIG ballistics aren't that much different than 9mm. They don't play a big enough role, they don't matter as much, and so on, right? And I don't agree with that necessarily, but I can see why they would say it. They always argue that 9mm ammo technology is what makes it a, you know almost just as good, right? And they always say almost as good or basically the same ballistics, but they're not. They're never the same ballistics. 357 SIG, which has been proven on many channels, you know, many situations, is just a far superior round. But what makes it even more of a far superior round, like I said, out of a short barreled handgun. And once again, that is another benefit of 40. Right here, I have an HK P2000 SK. I could turn this into 13 total rounds, 12 plus 1, a 357 SIG. But what I could also turn it into is a 9mm handgun. This 40 shield right here, which is normally just a stock 40 shield, can also be turned into a 9mm handgun as well as 40 or 357 SIG. So you get three calibers whenever you buy 40. Now, like I said, 357 SIG, what is the capacity on something like this? Well, the capacity on this right here is 7 plus 1 for 8 total rounds. Which rounds matter in self-defense? Typically, it's not your 10th, your 8th, your 7th, your 15th. 
Tip, I have not seen a defensive shooting where someone defends themselves with 15 rounds. I'm, I've yet to see that, right? But sure, it can happen. But the rounds that truly matter are your first, your second, your, th your third. You know what I mean? Those are the shots that matter. Those are the ones that put stuff to an end quicker. And what round puts them to an end quicker? Obviously, we got 10 millimeter. But for a lot of cases, you know, you could potentially see over penetration. But 357 SIG, it's just a different animal. And I get it, it's expensive, so it doesn't make sense for everybody. But when people talk about everyday carry, I've seen in the comments, I've seen, you know, people on other people's videos. Most people don't take everyday carry serious. What it is for them, it's, I carry a gun. Hey, I can go show this person, hey man, I got a gun on me. That's not what everyday carry is about. It's about, like, defensive situations that are serious. Defensive situations where you could potentially end up in court fighting for your life. You could be fighting for your life in those situations. You could be fighting for your kids' lives in those situations. So like I said, 9mm will it do the job? Yes. But if it comes down to it and I only have 5 shots, right? Or I get off 5 shots in a self-defense encounter. Which caliber will do more damage? Which caliber will put an end to the threat quicker, right? So this being 8 rounds to me... That's plenty. I also have the eight round mag, making it eight plus one for a total of nine rounds. If I carry the two together, that's 15 plus one. That is plenty. I'm telling you, that is plenty. It comes down to your training. Now, like I said, it's more expensive. I get that. But you can also find 357 SIG for just a couple dollars more per box than nine millimeter and 40 online. So you just got to find the right places, right? Now check this out right here. Are cleared. Check out this Apex trigger. Now, this was just a test run on my 357 SIG lower. Check this out. It is better than the Shield Plus trigger. I don't care what anyone says. This Apex trigger is just crisp, clean, accurate. And then the only thing I've done differently to this handgun right here is throw on these sights. Not my favorite sight picture. But I only realized that after shooting it. But they're plenty. They're good enough, whatever the case may be. One of my favorite handguns that I own is my Smith & Wesson m 40 Shield Performance Center. Hands down one of my favorite handguns. Handles recoil like an absolute champ. Many people say the Smith & Wesson m 40 Shield regular handles recoil better than the Glock 27. Which, when it comes to physics, doesn't make sense. But when it comes to how you build the handgun, I actually get it. The recoil on shields is so minimal, it makes sense. So when you make this setup right here in 357 SIG, it is a powerhouse of a handgun. Now, the Glock 33, in my opinion, I like it a little bit better. But in terms of, you know, winter time, being more comfortable, whatever, you cannot beat the shield in 357 SIG. Now, a lot of people would take out the whole grip, but hear me out. Whole grip does what? Helps minimize recoil. This setup right here... It's so fast, so accurate, so easy to shoot, and you can buy these shields for extremely cheap. I've seen them for $2.99 on PSA. Throw the Apex in there, that's $70. A whole grip, that's $20. You're now talking about $3.90. You know, you don't even need to upgrade the sights. But if you do, whatever. And then buy yourself the REM Sport Barrel, which worked closely, closely with Smith & Wesson, in order to make a barrel that functions properly with OEM specs. Therefore, this setup right here is $490 when it's all said and done. And you're getting a 7 plus 1 shield in 357 SIG or 8 plus 1. Another benefit is if you live in a place that is magazine restricted. If you live, it's funny. The people that live in mag, magazine restricted states, not all of them, but a lot of them that watch this channel, that's why they like my channel. Because I talk about options in 40 Smith & Wesson, options in 45. They want more power per round. If that was if more power per round wasn't a thing, then everyone in California would only want 9mm. But no, people want to maximize their ability to get out of a self-defense situation and put it to a halt. That's why a lot of them go to 40 and 357 SIG and 45. 9mm is a great round, don't get me wrong. But, like I said, I always say this. If you had three rounds to stop a potential person who's going to harm you and your family, would you want 9mm or 357 SIG? Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.